The one church I went to was called the Los Angeles Church of Christ. This guy sits me down, a guy named Edward. Never forget, I'm sitting there with my girlfriend who's an actress in Hollywood and beautiful girl. And uh, he says, so when's the last time you guys had sex? I said, right before this meeting. He says, you can't come to church if you're not going to come into You have to drop sex. I said, brother, we're good. Yeah. Are we good? And I walked away. We were uh, out at your, I guess, compound in Florida. You told me kind of your testimony, too, about becoming a Christian, that you were an atheist. And um, it, it was almost George Foreman-esque as far as your conversion. It wasn't like, ah, I guess I'll be a Christian. Um, tell me kind of what that's like, because I think a lot of people may not necessarily know that uh, about you. They, pro- they know you're a Christian. Um, they know that you're more conservative in your values, but they may not know what that transition was like. Yeah, so when you live in Iran, you have a hard time believing in God. I, I would always get kicked out of Bible study. My, my dad and mom would come in and say, why can't you just sit there? I'm like, I, I, I don't believe this stuff. I said, why is it? Were, were your parents Christians? They're Christians, both of them. I said, why is it that if we're getting bombed in Iran, the parks I'm going to, that building we used to go to, the whistling sound, tabajo, tabajo, alamate, kermes, attention, attention. The sign of red means that planes have crossed the border, and boom. So all of these thoughts that stay with you, yeah, I don't believe in God. We go to Germany, my parents get a divorce. I even get less you know, desire to want to have any kind of closeness to God. 12 to 18, zero church, zero anything. You couldn't get, I was a guy at church making fun of the pastor. And I go to the army, I'm in boot camp. And in boot camp, and AIT, uh, I had one of the higher uh, PT scores. So they gave me and a few other guys the opportunity to go spend time at this one camp for two days. And this guy had the swing from trees into the lake and pool table. I'm like, this is great to get away from all the stuff we're doing. But with one caveat, every night we had to listen to him do Bible study. And by the way, even then, that's 97, the military, 20, 26 years ago. So I was sitting back and I would play with the billiard balls in the back. I would just kind of do my thing and he's doing his thing. And then at the end of it, he comes up to me and says, hey, son, my parents gave me uh, this Bible as a gift in 1974, December 24th of 1974. I'll never forget. I have it till today. He says, I think you need this more than I need this. I said, I'm telling you. I'm the wrong guy to give this to. It's a waste. This is your parents. It's a gift. He says, son, I've been watching you. I've been listening to you. You need this. Just take it for me. Trust me. So I finally take it. I leave. Why is this guy giving it to me? I don't read the Bible. But I sit there, started praying three times a day. My prayer started like this. God, I don't believe in you. I think it's fake. I think it's for weak people. But if you're out there, great. I want to know something. But if not, I'm talking anyways. Here's what's on my mind today. I start going on a journey. And I start going to everything I can. I knew Muslim because I grew up in Iran, so I understood Hezbollah, Muslim, their beliefs, Prophet Muhammad. I've I've gone through that route. I started looking at Scientology, L. Ron Hubbard, Dianetics, you know, what he believes in, what their ideas are. I started looking at... test your seating levels? I went through a lot of it. By the way, I did assist and all these things you got to do. Very interesting. It reminded me of a Freemason model, like you can go up and move up and all this stuff, plus a few other ancillary stuff. Yeah. Uh, anyways, and then eventually uh, I became a Christian at 25 years old, January 21st or some date like that in 04. I become a Christian. I go to this church of Shepherd of the Hills. 27 churches I went to. One church I went to was called the Los Angeles Church of Christ. This guy sits me down, a guy named Edward. Never forget, I'm sitting there with my girlfriend who's an actress in Hollywood and beautiful girl. And... Uh, he says, so when's the last time you guys had sex? I said, right before this meeting. He says, you can't come to church if you're not going to come into You have to drop sex. I said, brother, we're good. Yeah. Are we good? And I walked away. Did he shake so your hand or did he ask he, you to wash the Well, I mean, he shook my hand. Whether he th- believed yeah. what I did with my hand, that's up to him. That's his risk, not my risk. <laughs> exactly. All right. So I walked away, and I'm like, nah, not going to happen. Anyways, this girl and I, who we about, we're about to get married, I love her. I want to marry her. Is this the same one you were sleeping same with? Same girl, that absolutely. And I say, listen, I want to test something with you and I. Because if we're going to get married, I want to know if this is more than sex. She says, okay, what do you want to do? I said, I want to go one month, no sex. She says, you're serious? I said, yeah. She says, do you have someone else on your life? I said, no. I just want to know what we're going to do on a Friday night when we're in the expedition without having sex. And she says, you're sure about this? I said, yes. Great. First night, Friday, we're going out. By the way, you kind of undersell that. Like, it makes it easier to say, yeah, one month, no sex in the expedition. You weren't necessarily romancing the situation. Well, listen, Diego, when you're broke, expedition is a bedroom. That's true. It is. Yes. Right. It's a full three. Best part is when the police puts the lights on you. It's like, stop. Get out of here. in the steam is like, oh, we're out of here. Thank you so much, officer. Appreciate you for not Every giving us a weird Every time you hear a siren, you get flushed. <laughs> <laughs> That's bad conditioning, but okay. So anyway, so she thinks I'm weird. We go to church. She's uncomfortable. And then Billy Graham comes to Pasadena, 
and he gives a uh, talk in November of 2003. I go to every single one of his services. This is after her, uh, except for Saturday. I missed the service. I went to three of them, not on the one on Saturday because I had training. But, so we go for a month. Doesn't happen. Afterwards, I say, it's not going to work out. She found another guy. We had a bad breakup, but we're civil. We're good. We move on. And, and I'm like, you know what? I don't know what I'm doing here. So eventually I get baptized. I become a Christian. And then I start doing Bible study uh, Friday nights at Paznaz, Pasadena, from 6 p.m. to 2 in the morning. Every other Friday night, we're doing Bible study from 6 to 2, 2 a.m. And we're talking on philosophy, debate, all this stuff. Eventually, the crazy thing, most people don't even believe this if I say this, I was the guy in old Pasadena in front of nightclubs at 1 o'clock in the morning holding a John 316 sign mm. at 25 years old. That was me. So I just got on fire. I went 17 months. I said, I'm not touching any sex, nothing. And that was my thing because I was in Vegas all the time. I was a very good guy to party with. Six days a week, I was that guy. So eventually, I changed my habits. And uh, That's t uh, very typical of Iranians if they're not Muslim. It's like either if they're Muslim or they're, they just love to party. And like when I went to your house, I was not surprised at the amount of marble. <laughs> <laughs> but that was it. And then eventually, uh, uh, one of the nights that maybe it's the story you want to know is my girl and I uh, were at Universal Studio City Walk. She'll remember this vividly. We're in the car. We're having a big fight. I don't have any money. I feel like shit. I'm like, dude, I can't have forty nine thousand dollars, and I can't even afford to pay nine bucks for movies for this girl. I felt like I was just, I was not a man at that. My dad would always say, when men don't have money, they're not good for society. So you have to be able to contribute to have your manliness. We're in the car. We get into a big fight, and then we break it off, and she leaves. I'm in the car. Expedition. This is one thirty in the morning. At this point, we finished the movie, and I say, God, I haven't spoken to my mom for five years. But if you exist, I would love to talk to my mom. 30 seconds later, my next tell, I get a call from a block number. Brother, this is like a, I've told the story. It's a very weird moment in my, scariest moment for me. I don't want to answer the phone. And it's one of those next tells, well, you know, the, the flip phones. Yeah. And I flip it, and it's my mom crying. So why are you crying? She says, I got the feeling you were in pain. How'd you get this number? She says, you know, I just got it six months ago. I said, but do you know what I'm going through right now? What are you going? I said, no, nothing. But I don't know how to talk to her. I hang up the phone. I sat in that car that night, top of the hills, chills all over my body. I'm like, oh my God, either this is ironic or this is real, but the level of coincidence is a little too real. I could have chosen to say it's ironic. I chose to believe it was God and he has my back and he's had my back from day one. That level of confidence I got from that moment that somebody was watching me and had my back is the reason why I am where I'm at today. I make my decisions purely knowing he has my back. And if you ask me what's one of my biggest fears, one of my biggest fears in my life is losing his favor. I can't tell you how much that scares the hell out of me. Mm. Because to me, in life, when you get a person that has your back, and they have your back like you've seen endless times they've had your back. You take that for granted and you lose it. You're a fool. So you've had my back. You've given me this life. The four kids, my wife, my dad now living with me. My biggest fear at the time when I was not a Christian was my kids never meeting my dad because I never met his dad, my grandpa. They are best friends with him now. They love him. My son plays violin with him. My two-year-old daughter's best friend is my dad, where they're together all the time, and now she goes to school. She was going five days. We took her out two days so she can be around my dad all the time. And my nanny, who's been such an amazing woman in our lives for 14 years, her mom is 85 years old. She was worried about her mom, so she wanted to retire, go to Mexico. I said, bring your mom with us. She lives with us. It, we got her a nice place in the house. And, man, I'm the luckiest man alive, but because I have that favor so imagine you have that kind of an untouchable favor. You want to compromise that favor? So, so it's such a, it's, it's a unique. Uh, that's, your, that's your biggest fear. Oh, I can't even describe it to you. Mine's bull sharks. Yeah, yours is? Bull, bull sharks? sharks? Yeah, I respect them in freshwater. Watch Ladder with Crowder live Monday through Thursday, 10 a.m. Eastern.